So as your general advice for both, you know, your love spread and also the other spread that deals with other areas of your life, I feel like um, whatever advice you've been giving another person and, you know, it, I, I feel like it's a constant, like over and over and over and over again, you're giving advice to another person and they might not have listened to what you had to say. They might not have um, heeded your advice or but they might not feel like you're justified or you're the expert so that they sh they they don't need to take your advice. This is the week where you're going to get some type of a um, coming back. Uh, the person might be coming back and, you know, tell you um, just verbally or even non-verbally that, you know what, you were right. I was wrong. I should have listened to your advice. They might say that outright or if they're a little bit more proud or a little bit more defensive, they might say like, you were right, you know, without further comments as to what exactly happened that made you believe that I was right. So I feel like you're going to get some confirmation in that arena. I see it in your love relationships. I also see that energy playing out in um, friendships, family relationships as well. And um, I see it playing out in your professional environment as well. And I feel like the best strategy for you is to kind of just, you know, stand there and look, okay, for this week. Um, don't beat a dead horse. So that means, you know, don't... Um, if they're refusing to listen, just kind of let them go on their merry way because sooner or later they're going to come to the realization that you were right. And then I also feel um, an element here about not gloating. You know, I, I don't feel that you're going to do that because when you give advice, it does come from the heart. And oftentimes, no matter how much somebody frustrates you, when you care about them, that's when you will give advice. If you don't care, you wouldn't, you wouldn't waste your time. And so you do care about someone and that's why your advice comes with, without strings attached. You do want them to take things to heart and to, you know, um, do the right thing or to, you know, walk on the right path. But you're not going to gloat if they mess up or if they veer off track because they deviate from what you told them to do. Um, so anyways, in your relationship sector, this is the energy that you bring to the table. We have here the king of wands. And this is a really, really strong energy that you exude for this week. This is somebody that knows how to prioritize. They know how to organize. They know how to get things done. And um, this shows a lot of leadership capability. So I feel like for many of you, you have really established yourself as a major player um, in your relationships, in your life, in your work environment, in your friendship circle. You're somebody that um, leads other people. You've been there, you've done that. And I feel like from your the sheer amount of uh, experience that you have gathered through your lifetime, uh, you know where you stand. You know how to lead people. You know how to navigate situations and circumstances based on your real life experiences. And uh, when I see this king, he has a shield. He has a sword, you know, and he's got that little rod there. But um, what it means is it's somebody that is not afraid to get their hands dirty. They don't call themselves a leader. And, you know, uh, when the going gets rough, they run away from battle. They're there in the trenches with their the people that they lead to fight, you know, to the end. And so they don't run away from battles. They're very courageous. And they themselves, they have a sense of loyalty to the people that they lead. So whatever... Um, values or whatever, you know, life path that you live by, whatever you live by, you die by. So it's like, you're not going to give somebody advice that you don't yourself believe in. So I feel like there is no pretenses here. There's no hypocrisy and people sense that about you. And I feel like because of that, you're in a really good position to um, kind of like to be a very good relationship partner because other people believe that no matter what, whatever you say is what you stand by. So there's no mixed messages. There's no like, you know, I like you, but I don't like you today. Like there are no mixed signals. There are no mixed messages that you're send sending. You're very clear about your expectations in relationships and you're very clear about what you are demanding or asking of another person. I usually think of this as somebody who has children, somebody who's like, um, 
who might be in a relationship uh, with children, but I also feel with this card, it's someone who's single, okay? So you might be a single uh, parent, a single mother, a single father um, with children. You might have, you know, exes that uh, you've had children with. You might have been married to them at one point or just, you know, in a relationship with them. But this is somebody that has children. And if not, then this is somebody that's single. So for many of you, the energy is you are very single for this uh, week. And I feel like that's what I'm tapping into. The partner you're dealing with is somebody who's a little bit more wishy-washy. So their energy is prayer will make it all better. You know, let's not uh, go out and get our hands dirty. Let's just sit in one place and pray. Pray for things to get better. Pray for improve improvement. Pray for opportunities. And I feel like your energy is in opposition to what your partner is dealing with here with the judgment card. And um, I feel like, you know, you don't mind getting your hands dirty. You do what needs to be done because it needs to be done. And... You don't wait around for opportunities. You go and grab opportunities or you go and scavenge and, and find opportunities. And I feel like in the love department, you take initiative and you're very clear about dictating, hey, this is what I'm looking for in a relationship partner. This is what I really want. And whereas the other person is a little bit more like, let's wait on things. Let's wait around. Let's wait for another day. Uh, let's wait for the right time. Let's wait for the right circumstances. I feel like they're very, very unclear about what they want. They might even believe in, you know, um, divine timing. And they might even believe in, like, things would just magically plop down and fall on their lap. And I feel like for some of you, you might be dealing with someone who you feel is not very practical or pragmatic. You feel like their heads are in the, the clouds and they're really not manifesting and making things happen for themselves. And yes, the judgment card is all about contact. There is communication back and forth between you and this person. But I also feel like you have given them advice. You have told them, you know, you should do this, you should do that. And they're like, no, let's wait. Let, let's just let me sort things out in my on my end. Or, you know, let, let me just um, do this other thing. And they never get around to doing what they're supposed to. Or they never get around to doing what you have advised them or counsel them on. And as a result of it, dealing with them can be a little bit frustrating because they're not taking the initiative. They're not as grounded and they don't grab opportunities when opportunities come calling. And so they let a lot of opportunities pass them by. The interaction between you and partner and your partner, I have here the nine of wands. And the nine of wands uh, mainly uh, dictates your energy um, as the fire sign. Okay, so the nine of wands is like somebody who's... Um, battle weary and they're not sure like should I keep plugging away at this it doesn't seem like there's any movement or should I cut my losses and try to move away and in the traditional right of weight deck is that man with the bandage on his head and he's got nine rods and he's kind of battle weary and he's just kind of paranoid um, what I feel though is you're assessing you know you're being pragmatic you're being like strategic as well do I plug away at this relationship? Do I uh, continue giving them advice? Do I continue to, you know, play the role of the father, even though they're supposed to be my relationship partner? Do I take on this, this maternal, you know, take them under my wings and, and take care of them and just protect them? Or do I need to find myself another partner? So I feel like for some of you, single or not, you might have a, a love interest that's a little bit... Um, it, it, they're just very different from you. But I do see this element about you giving advice over and over and over again. And they're they're not really by taking the bait or they feel like, oh, I'll just wait it out. Everything's going to work itself out, you know, and they don't really it, it, it basically absolves them of having to take initiative for their own life. So I do feel somebody that has been uh, through. I feel their fair share of disappointment. So for example, if it's a partner and um, they're not able to get a job, right? Just an example. Um, if they're not able to get a job and you tell them, you know, for you, it, it's very easy because you have, you come from a different space. But I feel like for, for them, it's a little bit more difficult because they've gone through possibly, you know, months of interviewing and never getting called back 
and then they've gone through like a lot of resume revision right and they're tired and just think about it if it's like if, if someone has gone through nine interviews right all from different companies all with different people and they have been turned down nine times I mean at the end of the day it's really hard to say that oh I'm not qualified for the job I feel like the reality of it is they don't like me nine separate companies nine separate interviewers nine separate situations didn't want me it's very tragic for the ego it's very demoralizing and I feel like that's similar to the space that your partner is dealing with or coming from where there's something that they're not able to admit to themselves and I feel like when it's denial or when it's like you know things that they're glossing over whoever it is um, they have to come to terms with it on their own time they have to come to terms with it in their own way and so you can talk and advice and you know tell them to your blue in the face but until they're able to admit these certain things about themselves it's really hard for them to make changes right it's really hard for us to make changes when we're in denial and so I feel like you know for some of you this might play out in the um, realm of my partner is not able to get a job and I, I told my partner do this do that but they're not listening and you're getting frustrated and I just want you to understand what your partner is dealing with potentially and then for others it's sort of like you might have a, a partner that's very naive and their head their head is just in the clouds they're distracted they they might seem like they're always you know like um, they're always late they don't seem like they might be always late they might be very very just um, they might not be very affectionate and time and time again you told them you know I want more affection I want things to change I feel very much by myself like I'm a single person even though I'm dating you and I feel you know like you you tell them many many times and this might be the week where they come in and try to make some changes okay because I feel like change is coming for you so I have here the this is the Knight of Pentacles this is somebody coming in making an offer making amends trying their best to appease you trying to bring something substantial to the table so if it's a partner who has been out on their luck when it comes to work, they're going to hear good news. And I feel like that's going to help them because they're going to um, either take your advice or do something to initiate things from their end. Either way, taking your advice so that they can get things started in their own life. Okay. And then if it's a partner that has been estranged, either they're traveling, they're not around and you feel like I'm with them, but I'm so single, you know, I'm with them, but I feel like I'm, I'm just single because they're not giving me the affection, the attention. They're not physically here. They're coming back into the picture with good news. They've done a lot of work on themselves. And I feel like sometimes it takes that distance away from the people and the things that we love and the things and the people that we're familiar with for us to make some changes, for us to really see ourselves from a different context in order to know what we need to figure, um, figure out, in, in order to know what we need to work on, in order to know what we need to change about ourselves. So I feel like there's a realization coming through. For others of you, if you've been hoping and praying for a relationship, uh, we have the death card here, which is a change. So this is a change around. If you're single, you're going to be in a relationship. If you're in a relationship, you might be single. So there's a change around. It doesn't denote, you know, any uh, specific direction, but I feel for a majority of you, there's a couple relationship coming through. It's on the offer for you. And I do feel like many of you are going to go through the month of October, um, starting to come together with another person and starting to couple up with another person okay um, if you're dealing with a Scorpio with this death card there's some good news coming around for the two of you for both of you if you're dealing with an earth sign Taurus Virgo Capricorn there's a, an offer coming through and I feel like it's going to be very good very stable it's slow you might have been waiting for it they might have been waiting on you um, but I feel like there is a coming together in other areas of your life um, there will be a lot of get togethers okay get togethers with old friends get togethers with old colleagues get together with um 
like family members, but I feel more so friends, colleagues, like um, people you used to work with, people you used to go to school with, um, more in a more social, professional type of a setting, not so much family. Um, I also feel like travel and movement coming to see people, people traveling and moving to come see you. And I feel like these are long standing significant friendships, okay? Um, I feel like these people have been around with you through um, a very important milestone in your life. And I say that because of the Six of Cups. This is a flashback from the past, walking down memory lane, um, recalling, you know, like a lot of fun times between you and another person. And I'm always drawn to this tear, you know, the 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 person is crying. So it's like really good times to be had, reunions with other people, and it's linked up with the Three of Cups, which is social engagement, social outings, being the life of the party, and hearing really, really good news about the people that you've used to, you know, hang around with, or hearing through the grapevines, like, oh, so-and-so is doing this, so-and-so is married, so-and-so has a baby, things like that. And I feel like it's a really, really nice, like walk down memory lane. And I do see social engagement happening for you guys, where you're going to run into people from your past. All are good people. I don't see like, you know, the past coming back to haunt you. And I feel overall, you have so much career and achievements and, you know, just um, positivity in your um, financial and professional sector. That, you know, sometimes when um, we, we don't want to go to high school reunions or we don't really want to meet up with old friends, if we feel like we haven't made it, right? Six, some of us, and I feel for you guys, especially uh, the fixed signs, you, Scorpio, Taurus, and Aquarius, you want your career to speak for you. You want to be like, hey, the envy of the party. And um, I feel like if you haven't made it professionally, you're very weary about these reunions, but I feel like right now you're in a good space. You know, you're where you need to be professionally. A lot of doors are opening for you. So you're at a point where you're like, okay, I'll be there. I'll be at this reunion. I want to talk about what I'm doing. I want to talk about these projects I'm handling. I want to talk about all my responsibilities that people entrust me with, not in the spirit of bragging, but in the spirit of I'm really proud of the person that I am today. I'm really proud that despite everything that I've been through, that, you know, I made it. And um, I'm entrusted with a lot of responsibilities. I'm seen as someone who's competent. And I've created a name for myself. So I feel like you're going to be the life of the party. And you're going to be, um, you know, you're, you're going to have a lot to to offer. You're going to have a lot to say. And you're going to have... Um, a lot of people admiring you and possibly even envious, but not in a bad way. They're not jealous and vindictive. I feel like they look at your life with envy and they're going to just be um, really glad or just to be very happy for you. Okay. So there's a lot of travel and movement that's coming in with this eight of wands too. And this is like, um, uh, travel by air, travel over waterways, so, you know, across the continent to U.S., to another state, and I also feel like uh, work travel, work demands and things like that, possibly even traveling with another partner and having the means to do recreational travel, travel for leisure rather than just business, so I feel like if you're not even traveling this week, it's going to be played out, you know, through the month of October, where there will be a lot of these uh, engagements, offers, and, and social outings, and, and things that are coming into the picture. I'm seeing you possibly living in a colder climate, going to somewhere that's a little bit warmer. And I also feel like uh, overnight, you know, like a, a red eye type of a, tr a plane ticket, where you might be as well, uh, move like going to another country, where you have to, you know, sleep overnight on a plane. So I, I do see those elements coming through. Um, and I also feel like, you know, if you're connecting with people from your past, you have a lot to say and you have a lot of wisdom and advice, possibly in the career front that you can give them. And I, I feel like you need to give them these advice because they're going to be thankful for it. Okay. 